Hi folks, so we have got a slightly bigger job today than normal and that is we're going to be fitting a fast road intercooler from Ali Sport to the Discovery 3. <laughs> to get the intercooler fitted I'm going to have to remove the front bumper, the headlights, uh, the wheel arches, the inner linings, uh, the crash bumper and a few other ancillaries. So it's quite an involved job, but I think methodically, if we go through it step by step, it should be fairly simple, but quite time consuming. So let's get stuck into it. So probably should have put a quick release connector on here when I did the spotlights, but it didn't have one originally, so I just kind of wired it up. That is something I'm gonna to have to do, I think, in the future, or I'd like to do. Uh, removing the headlights, pretty simple. It's just got these tabs, but you'll find that if you just pull them straight up, they won't come free because Cool, that's a tricky one. They don't come free straight away. You've got to wiggle them just to get it in the hole. So they go down just a touch. Then you'll find it'll just pull out easy. <clears throat> and then just remove the connector. So I've got my clips off, my two screws from the front. So this should just lift off. There you go. And it just pulls out from the bottom. Lots of mud in there. So it's good to have a clear out. Now I need to just remove the lower valance. It's just this bottom one. So I think we're pretty much ready to get the bumper off now. So it's clipped in. There was a couple of eight mil uh, bolts at the top that just go into that plastic frame of the crash bar mount. And then we've got some bolts underneath here. One of which I had to grind off, unfortunately, because it had seized, but I think we should be good. Intercooler actually looks pretty good. It's not clogged that I can see. Oh yeah, it is clogged badly at the bottom. Everything's fairly intelligently laid out, so you can get to most things. Although apparently there is a secret screw behind here that we might struggle to get to. There we go. So it actually just hooks, it actually hooks on and over when you're doing it again. This is the, this piece has to come off and to get access to a fixing screw, it's quite difficult at the back. Now we don't refit this, so it is sacrificial. So potentially if we can't find it, we can just rip it off, I guess. Right, we have a couple of eight mil screws or bolts holding the duct in place. Uh, you can get to this one easily enough. Okay, yeah, so it is just a little clip. You see that? So that's just like a little bracket. I did manage to get the screw out and the trick to it is to go underneath. So you go underneath and behind the washer bottle with a little elbow on your extension rod and then you can get it to go on and undo it. Otherwise, there's not enough room. So that is how to get that off, but that's probably the hardest part of the job so far. There we go. It is really nice when you get into a job and you see that whatever you do, it's gonna make a difference. And uh, you can just see how clogged up this is. I don't know what the condition of it is behind. That's been on there a long time. So we're not, we should just get five brake horsepower just by cleaning that, really. Um, but it'd be nice just to get all of this clear. And this is not me, as you know. I've only done one green lane trip recently, and uh, it certainly wasn't with clay. So try and get this as clean as possible. So you can't quite see from this angle, but there are a couple of shields either side of the sump tray. Um, that give me access to the intercooler hoses and I've actually had those uh, I've had access to those before when we changed the hose when we first got the vehicle so they're just clipped in with some trim clips so we can get those off uh, and we should be able to get to the hose clamp then and undo the intercooler hose. So the clips are looking pretty ropey so I think we're going to fit a whole new complement of clips when we put everything back on. There's the shroud from the driver's side from the right hand side and there is our intercooler and we just need to loosen that off. So just in here we've got some mounting plugs that are expanding push pin release type. So those two pushed in should release the intercooler. These pins all the way through. There we go. 
So I've got my two pins, keep hold of those. These plastic pins are actually a sleeve that passes all the way through the hanger bracket. So that's gonna have to be, I think, tap through all the way. Right, I pushed one through, here we go. You can see that there. I pushed it through using an old bolt. Okay, this will now come out. All lies. There we go, look, it's not a tight fit at all. Perfect, right. Okay, so we've moved on a little bit. We've managed to get our intercooler in place. Now this is the off-road intercooler. And the reason it's called that is because it's missing a big section here to allow you to actually fit a winch, which is something I guess we might want to do in the future. So I'm trying to make it slightly future-proof. Up here, you can just see there's two brackets on the intercooler and I'm thinking they're supposed to be able to be hard mounted onto this frame here, but they're just not in the right place. Uh, so we've got them zip tied in just to suspend the intercooler where it needs to be. These mounting plates go in place. Now, again, these seem okay, but one or two of them are slightly out of centre. So these two lower ones are not lining up either. So I'm going to have to drill those out a bit. So actually suspending it in position with these two zip ties is 100% the easiest thing to do to get everything lined up. Um, it just makes slotting everything together a lot easier. Back. got a serrated flange on that nut and that should now allow me to get all those in yep there we go and obviously I can't do that until I put the crash bar back on so with the oil cooler what I've done is I've cable tied it to the original fixing point uh, for the tube fixing point on the original intercooler so it's plastic on those hoses there's nothing sharp to catch um, it's possible I might have to re-look at that how it's mounted but it's good and solid and there's a bit of flex in there so it shouldn't rub so you've got the intercooler flexi pipes that come off the top of the engine and then you've got these connecting aluminium tubes that you need to connect where the original intercooler connected to and then you've got these elbows that we're going to put in place to connect that to our new intercooler so it's pretty easy but i figured it'd be a bit easier to do it while everything's a little bit loose and i've got access before i put the crash bar on okay they all seem to have gone on nicely so i've relocated my sensor my outdoor temperature sensor that's at the top there um, everything's secure pipe wise it's just these brackets now need to line up when I put the crash bar on. So the top of the bracket here that's designed to slide on and locate, we'll have to take those off, I think, because the plates are in the way. So it's been a couple of weeks now since I fitted the intercooler and I'm really pleased with the results. I can't say that I've got more power as such, but what I have got is a definite smoother delivery of power. So the whole vehicle feels smoother, more relaxed. There is plenty of power there, but I just really prefer the way it drives now. It's been such an improvement. So as far as economy goes, I've definitely seen some improvements. Just going around town, I've been getting sort of just above 20 to 21 MPG in the past. 
and now we're looking at about 23 just under so that's definitely a, an improvement and on a long run I did do um, about a hundred mile trip the other day and I was getting about 38 to the gallon which is definitely about 4 mpg more so I just think that's a real result I don't think it will pay for the intercooler itself but certainly it's definitely welcome so I hope you've enjoyed the video obviously there were some issues with getting that intercooler fitted to my particular vehicle but we had a conversation with uh, Ali Sport and they seem to think it might be because I've had a slight knock at the front and it's knocked things out so when I'm down at Ali Sport next time we're going to strip things down again they're going to have a look and possibly fabricate some brackets for me to make sure that I can get everything sort of bolted on as securely as possible but I'm actually really happy with the way it's gone on it's definitely secure and the one thing I am going to do and you'll notice that we've got some slight changes to the, uh, the sort of delivery of the vehicle at the moment on the Disco 3 we've got this uh, sort of stone guard on the front here we're going to be actually painting the grill and the bumper in black and when I do that I'm going to be cutting out some channels in here and replacing it with some wire mesh to allow more free flow of air so plenty to work on hopefully you've enjoyed the video if you have do give me a thumbs up do subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one